The mandible blade is referred to as the antlion claw internally, even though the blade is literally a mandible, i.e. part of the mouth. I guess the blade must have originally been a claw, but was changed into a blade later into production. Platinum coins are worth 100 times the value of their gold counterparts, but the ore or bar cell value itself is only 50% more than gold. Every minion summoning staff in the entire game consumes 10 mana on summon, except the new Flink staff, which consumes just 5 mana. Generally, this is of no issue as no one runs out of mana on a one-time summon. If you look at all the sprites of all the Nebula Pillar enemies, you may notice that every single one of them has their brain exposed to the world. Maybe they just copied the Moon Lord's great A idea of putting his heart outside his ribs, but hey, par for the course. The Lizard Altar emits 10% of the light of a person using the Shine Potion buff. The trigger radius for Plantera to spawn from the breaking of a Plantera's bulb is a rhombus with diagonals of 50 tiles. Hellstone has a special property that allows it to not burn in lava, similar to Fire Blossom. As a block in Hell, this is necessary, if not redundant since the high rarity of green stops it from burning anyway. This was because it was only given this high rarity in 1.1, so the special exception was necessary before that. The most expensive fish that is also edible is the Chaos Fish, a very rare catch that sells for 3 gold. The blue body of the Sharkron Balloon becomes pink when turned into a horseshoe balloon. The Diamond Gemstone Block, when placed, shows bluish diamonds reminiscent of Minecraft. However, the held item sprite for the same block seems to show the diamonds in a natural color, which is colorless white. When attacking Granite Golems with the Bone Javelin, the penetrated debuff damage stacks during their invincibility, dealing massive damage when the invincibility expires. Kind of a neat quirk with the debuff. In Expert Mode, the Pumpkin Moon and Frost Moon progress twice as quickly, as point values are doubled. Despite the enemies being yet harder than Master Mode, the points do not scale in this difficulty. Another fun fact about the point system. Before 1.3.0.4, the invasion progress could overflow when the point value exceeded 32,767, the signed 16-bit integer limit. Basically, the number got too big for a number sort of 16 bits to handle, and it would go from wave 22 way before wave 1. Multicore lighting used to be included in Terraria 1.3, but this was removed in 1.4. Apparently it set the number of threads used to render lighting effects, but I never really noticed anything with it. All I did was turn it to the max to flex my number of CPU threads. Amber is the same cell price as Diamond, but is less powerful and used to craft gem-based items, especially its torch. It is well known that in 1.2, developer wings would give you lethal debuffs upon wearing them, similar to Red's potion. This was only added in 1.2.0.2, when you could safely wear dev items in the short time between 1.2 and 1.2.0.2, a time span of just 3 days. In 1.2, the Chlorophyte Drill originally could mine Lizard Bricks, despite being obtained before Plantera and Golem. In the same 1.2.0.2 update mentioned previously, the devs found out and hard nerfed it to 190% power, meaning it couldn't even mine Chlorophyte. Just 6 days later though, the devs realized that nerfing the Chlorophyte Drill to be the Terrarian equivalent of the Golden Pickaxe was bad, and gave it the neutral 200% pickaxe power it has today. Of all the jellyfish, only the hard mode green jellyfish actually inflicts a debuff, the silence debuff. Before 1.2.2, presents had three different colors and didn't stack, but afterwards presents were changed to drop as a new single present item. Old presents, as they're still in the game as different items, are still stable and functional. It's hard, the achievement granted when entering hard mode depicts the souls of hard mode. Clockwise, there are might, sight, night, fright, light, and flight. Know how the console exclusive Soul of Blight is excluded, as was never included on modern versions of Terraria. Prior to 1.4, the Dread Nautilus was referred to as the Blood Nautilus, and was prominently featured in the 1.4 trailer. In the end, it got a name change and became a rather minor part of the update, being obscured behind the Empress of Light, Queen Slime, and the obscure Blood Moon fishing mechanic. Hey, at least the staff it drops is literally carrying you until Terra Prisma. The Sonar Potion will always display what is reeled up, except in the case of the Duke Fishron, which is just nothing. The Molten Hammax and Lucy the Axe have unusually high axe powers for pre-hard mode, having the same power as Luminite Hammaxes. They are, however, beat by the totally not a guitar, Axe. The Horrified debuff is just an even more terrified version of the poor soul from the weak debuff. The Bleeding debuff does not allow life regeneration, which is a particularly annoying debuff on players. When inflicted on enemies using the Tazona, it actually causes their health to decrease, even though that's not what the Bleeding debuff actually does. All the banned accessories used to have 2D side view sprites, but they were updated into superior shaded and 3-dimensional like sprites in 1.3 and onwards. Before 1.2, the werewolf buffs only used to trigger on the full moon instead of every night, like they do now. This was more consistent with the werewolf mythos, but was less useful as an actual accessory. The release lantern soul during the lantern night event will stay aloft for a total of just 16 seconds, much shorter than its background kin. The sound the lunatic cult makes when it spawns has always been heard by me to be, and you're no more. 
but I have no clue what it actually says. It's just too distorted. Harpies used to be a lot more fat and pale, but they were given a lot more human-like appearance in 1.4.0.1. Their part human arm stubs were also removed, so they looked less like a human in a wingsuit. The ancient light that the lunatic cultist uses is actually a round sprite, even though it's a star-shaped sprite in-game. This is similar to how spell balls like the Water Sphere, Water Bolt, Burning Sphere, and Rune Blast are all just circles with particle effects trailing behind them. The projectile itself is not that fancy, it's the shaders that make it that way. If you throw the guide voodoo doll into a pool of lava very close to the edge of the world, the wall of flesh will despawn right after spawning out of bounds. So, I got this fact from the wiki, and it's been there for a long time, at least a couple years. Whenever I try doing this, it seems to not work, so maybe I'm just bad, or they fixed it or the wiki is wrong. Who knows? Either way, I'm just gonna put this here instead of making this a 49 fact video, so maybe you can try with this, I don't know. Despite being only worth 5 silver, using a fallen star on a wooden boomerang increases the value by 90 silver, from 10 silver to 1 gold. In 1.4.2, they added the ability for the star cannon to deal critical hits, as it was bugged beforehand. This same issue did not apply to the super star shooter, it's upgrade. Fallen starts have a function when used, similar to the mana crystal. This is a leftover from the 1.0 days when you used Fallen Stars to restore 20 mana. It even inflicted Potion Sickness. Goldfish used to be obtained by killing goldfish mobs, and were crappy healing them for 20 health each, similar to today's Mushroom. In 1.2.3, this was changed, with them becoming critters with the introduction of the bug net. Today, you can still craft soup with goldfish, harkening back to their consumable roots. The way the Aerial Bane determines an enemy is airborne is quite particular. If there are no solid blocks within 12 blocks underneath the enemy, it is airborne and the bow receives a 50% damage boost. Fledgling wings used to be relatively difficult to obtain as a non-journey mode character, requiring fishing from Azure and Sky Crates. Today, they are just a one-third chance from Skyland Chests, which is much simpler. The Empress of Light sound effects make use of both channels of the audio, giving the sound effects a sense of swishing from left to right. Stoned is more dangerous than webbed. Webbed also stops you mid-air, while stone will cause you to fall like a rock and then die. Mana Sickness's damage reduction is 5 times the amount of seconds in percent. For example, it is 25% at 5 seconds and 50% the maximum duration of 10 seconds. This effect is also multiplicative, so it applies after all their buffs and damages have already been tallied. When warned, Nature's Gift is much more glimmery on the outside compared to the rather tame shading of the similar Jungle Rose Vanity item. The four items that have a custom back sprite when in use are the Contaminator, Heat Ray, Leaf Blower, and Elf Melter, all of which are flamethrower-esque contraptions. A neat little attention to detail is that the slow fall granted by the Umbrella is disabled when used for attacking. This makes sense as a parachute wouldn't work if you just turned it 90 degrees on its side. The mechanical cart seems to be made of the individual parts of the mechanical bosses, with the wheels being the two eyes, the wagon piece being a segment of the destroyer, and the battery piece being some part of Skeletron Prime. It's unknown what part the battery part came from. The Bone Helm is not actually a helmet, but is an accessory. It has the ability to override all cosmetics on your head as long as it is equipped though, so it does show as a helmet. This is different from the other armor-like accessories, like the Arctic Diving Gear, which are always overridden by helmets no matter what. Ghosts are able to override disabled enemy spawns in Journey Mode, as their method of spawning is different from normal. In the trading card artwork for the Underworld, you can actually see a Life Crystal in the Underworld, despite the fact that you do not naturally spawn in the Underworld within the game. This is because before 1.2.3, life crystals were actually able to generate within the dungeon and underworld. And lastly, mobile used to show gold hearts past 200 HP, but this was changed when life fruits were added. This is part 13 in the series. To watch the rest, click on the playlist. I recommend subscribing if you enjoyed the content. Besides that, go on with your day and goodbye.